Ay, 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 Yeah. Ay, 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 ay. Don't say anything until I bring your name up, okay, Rick? That's the rules of this thing. Yeah, I hear you. I'm here to follow rules. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know you don't like to follow rules, but can you follow that rule? Yeah, I can do that. All right. Do you break rules often? Uh, I, I, I tend to make my own rules and then break them. Mm. Yeah. I take it as far as I can go, usually. <laughs> yeah. That's the ultimate like God that. move. I like yeah. that. Yeah, it's just, you know. I created, like, I destroy. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I'm a bit of a, you know, keep my power type of person. And in it, house. It is, it's made me feel great and held me back in every way. <laughs> yeah. I don't like this Clark Kent thing you're doing with your leg. Like, I don't do that. It's very uh, Dean Kane. I like it. What are you oh, talking they, put, about? Put, 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 put it back. Actually, like, it looks pretty good. I don't it's know. Like what it, uh, yeah, yeah, there we go. All right, so start. Don't say anything until I say your name. Go ahead. One, negative one, negative two, <laughs> negative three, <laughs> negative four, negative five. Negative no one ever does that. <laughs> no. They go to the ground can zero, but not me. Can you I do. beg you yeah. to keep going? All right, so go. Five, five, four, four three, two, one. Zero, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven, negative eight, negative nine, negative ten. Keep going. Negative eleven, negative twelve, negative twelve, thirty, fourteen, negative fifteen, negative fifteen. You guys, welcome. Uh, we got George, uh, you know. You know, you know, I, you know, I said to you a year ago, you know, no more plain old white guy guests. <laughs> remember, remember, I looked at you a year I go, no more of these plain old white guy fucking white bread fucking Wonder Bread fucking guests, right? I love Wonder Bread. I know I love them too. And that's what I thought this week. I'm like, I love Wonder Bread. When I first came from the Philippines, Wonder Bread was my favorite. I would eat a whole loaf oh, with just God. butter. Right. And then people would say, what'd you have for breakfast? And I would proudly say, Wonder Bread. And they'd be like, that's it? Yeah. I didn't know it was a bad thing. But anyways, Wonder Bread's great. Wonder Bread's great. It's plain. It's wonderful. Um, you're not getting a lot of nutrients. Mm, not but a lot still, of I beg to differ. Uh, I'm a champion swimmer. It is? <laughs> it is? Wonder Bread is? Okay. So anyway, um, over the years, I've been like, you know, you know all these regular white guys, who is the top of them? <laughs> you know what I mean? There's... Who's there's, on the list? Yeah. There's a cream of the crop when it comes to regular white dudes. <laughs> plain, plain old white dudes. Yeah, yeah. And in my head, I'm like, which one would I, you know, if I was like the emperor of the universe. Sure. And I get to deem leaders. You are the emperor. Right. Of the universe. I would probably, this next guest, be you're now the new leader of the whites. But the regular whites. Plain whites. Plain yeah. whites, right? <laughs> you get to lead, you know. Ian Bag. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you get to lead, you know, Daniel Tosh. Ooh. Right? I mean, you're leading a lot of white people. And you have a lot on your shoulders. I, I also want to say this before I say your name. Is, and this, you know that this is true. I honestly think you're so talented. I think all of the guys, and, you know, this is my podcast, and I don't give compliments. But I'm just saying all the guys... That were store bread guys, like me, you, Sebastian. Maybe was he was he store bread? He worked there a little bit, right? Mm. But I think that you're one of the best. And I th and when you get spots, you get spots a lot. I I look at Emily every time, and I go, keep doing that because that guy deserves it. Give him a round of applause, Rick Ingram. Wow, what yeah, an yeah. intro! <laughs> Pretty good, right? My God, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you like being white? Yeah. <laughs> It's, you know, it's worked for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I mean, there's a lot of plain whites, and there's what's interesting now is for the first time, the plain whites are really up in arms about how things are uh, becoming more fair. For, <laughs> for, for the, you George know, is nodding. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're very angry about it. There's a lot of people who'll be like, dude, you probably would be famous by now if you weren't a straight white guy. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I've been unfamous and straight and white for 20 years. So <laughs> I don't think that's it. Yeah. But yeah, in but our eyes, you're the Lord of the White. You're the Thank Lord you. of the White. Yeah. Because, okay, that's the best. I'm excited about that. But can I, I want to say that you're, 
kind of an anomaly in the sense that um, you're one of those guys that we all have talked about over the years. Yeah. Like I've, I've had conversations with Paul A. Shore about you. I've had talked about talk, talks with Sarah Tiana. Uh, um, and it's like you're just a mystery because I just think that you, you should be 50 times bigger than you are. You know, do you feel that or no? Yeah, I mean, I do, but I, I'm I'm absolutely horrible at playing the game. So I'm yeah, away. yeah, I can't have I can't have you know hour long fake conversations with Hollywood types where I have to pretend like I think what they're doing is great or whatever that is. You know, I'm just really bad at it. There's a for me, I, I try and keep an element of being genuine that is uh, I feel frowned upon in. Hollywood in mm. general. I think that's what it is. Yeah. You just seem like a normal... It's not a weasel like you. <laughs> I always say the truth shall set you wait, wait, back. Wait, wait. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> He's not a what? He's not a weasel like you. I am weaselly, huh? <laughs> but I can't help it because I was raised with the weasel. That's the poly effect. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yeah. There is a poly effect, is there, there is, not? Yeah. I see, I see. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I got fired from touring with Polly. I think, was my oh. my body was rejecting weaselly. <laughs> Really? Would he, w did you do anything strange on the road or no? Did Polly? Yeah. Uh, he was always just like, he would try and just belittle me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it was yeah. always like, dude, come come clean up my room and pack my bags so that we're ready for <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I was like 23 years old. I'm like, I'm not doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he'd always throw everyone under the bus. Dude, Simone does it, bro. Yeah. Did you like, do it? No, he tried to do it to me too. Uh -huh. And I just wouldn't show up at the table. Yeah. Ah. Because for me, it's like, I'm not getting a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. I'm opening for Paul, which is great. He's a legend, and you know, in the circles that we run in, right? So you just go, but also when you're single, and back then, you're going. I wanna. I think I'm gonna get some play here. Yeah. That is what you think. It never happens. Never. <laughs> <laughs> it never happens. And, and he, it never. I've done so much play, and it never works. Yeah. I mean, I I have zero game in general. Yeah. But, like he stacks it up. To help, like I'm sure you probably got your own hotel room. I had to share a hotel room with the bodyguard. <laughs> oh, T with Terrell, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and Terrell's no, no, just no, no, he used to have this guy. It's Terrell, yeah. T, you don't know Terrell? Uh -uh. He's like the seven foot <laughs> giant dude, giant black guy. Pride of Chicago. Pride of Chicago. His name was T. Yeah. Right. You don't fuck with T, dude. One of the best dudes I've one of the best known. Yeah. Strong as fuck. Yeah. Also a very genuine human being. Yeah. Uh, he, like, tours now with, like, well-known R&B, hip-hop. Yeah, I, I saw me. So I was in, I was shooting, what was I shooting? I was shooting a movie called Keeping Up with the Joneses. Mm. Atlanta. With, in Atlanta, right? With Zach and those guys. I just a couple of scenes. That scene. But um, I remember being in the hotel, and and um, what's the long-haired magical DJ? The magic Aoki. Steve Aoki. One day you'll get it. You I ask Steve. it every I, episode. I, I know. I text him every day, and I just like pretending I don't know who he is. Who are you? <laughs> of course, I know who he is. He's one of the biggest. But I remember he was there, and I was talking to fucking Steve Aoki, and all of a sudden I was levitating. <laughs> so I see Steve Aoki in the fucking lobby. I go, "What's up, dude?" Wait, I go and I started levitating. <laughs> he was there, was working for uh, Aoki. He picks me up by the neck. <laughs> And, I, and, he, I, and he lifted me <laughs> off the ground like this. And I talked to Steve Aoki like this. <laughs> Fucking T is strong as fuck, bro. Good man. Good man. Yeah. So back then, you did it with T. How about Warlock? Uh, no, Warlock. I, I knew Warlock from the comedy store, from just smoking cigs and drinking Budweiser's on the front patio. If and... you were to describe Warlock's body. Who is Warlock? Who is Warlock? Who are these people? You don't know what Warlocks are, dude? <laughs> Warlock. Hey, Rick and I come from the medieval age. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We know Warlocks we're and the Warlords. Well, yeah, we had a different time, man. Warlock was like... Uh, he was the accountant for the House of Blues I on would have Sunset. Never th I would have never guessed an accountant. a yeah. warlock would be the accountant. Yeah. <laughs> That's all yeah. I'm going to say. Yeah. Real name, Imagine Roger. Cigarettes. <laughs> Roger. My Imagine dad's name. Cigarette smoke in human form. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, God. That's warlock. Yeah. Just it, it, ash. He's made of ash. <laughs> yeah. It's a good way of describing it. <laughs> yeah. Ash and Siggies. Also a great dude, but just definitely where you're just like, I'm, I'm getting cancer right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Also, you know, the, all those terms like, you're greasy, dude. You know what I mean? That's all derived from Warlock. Mimicking Warlock? No, just like all those words I feel like he came up with oh. by hanging out with Warlock. So Warlock. Polly, yeah. Yeah, Polly, yeah. yeah. 
So Warlock was this greasy dude, but back then it's like, um, but one time Polly goes, I was, this girl was blowing me. Mm-hmm. And Polly goes, after she was done, and I felt this, I've never had my heart break <laughs> so hard. Like, I remember this story. Though. Yeah, yeah. It, it, bra- it breaks my heart. So she's a poor girl. She's 22, How junior in college. No, I must have been at the time 28, mm. 27. And she's done, and she's, you know, she's wiping the cum off her face. <laughs> Oh, she blew you to completion? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've never successfully done never that. Did. Yeah, but I was younger. <laughs> the gun was new. I feel oh, like... The gun was way newer. Yeah, yeah. Lock and the you're trigger was... Loser. Ha- yeah, you're yeah. causing issues now with this. No. But he no. is. <laughs> I tried so hard first, on his first birthday. First all, I was like... Oh <laughs> I understand that. I understand that. And I said I would jerk off the rest. <laughs> and yeah, he I stopped said, me and he was like... I go, I, I, I'll, it's do too long. I'll take it from here. But she, her, she took an hour. Oh, I would have given you an hour. After 20 minutes, I was just on like. On your 50th birthday, I would have. <laughs> no, no, an you hour. were sweating. Your hands were wet. It was terrible. <laughs> I'm Meeting. notoriously bad at, like. Yeah. So, anyway. anyway. That's dedication. Okay, yeah, so, she's. Yeah. Full blo- credit she blows that. me and she's done. And I want to go. You want to go have breakfast or whatever? Because I always like to do that. Yeah, you're so sweet. <laughs> so I love sweet. That about and you. she goes, Blow him, dude. She looks at her to blow Warlock. <gasps> yeah. Right? And my heart went. Uh, and did she? Yeah. And, you know, and I had breakfast on my own. <laughs> that, that's the real sad part. <laughs> I went to breakfast. That's the sad part. Yeah, yeah. Still, I'm still getting breakfast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so she did that and broke my heart. But so you never got any back then. No, I, ne- I never got any. And then <laughs> there was like one time I was in, uh, I think I was in like Dayton, Ohio or something. Mm. And uh, Caparillo was with us. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And one of my best friends. After the show, someone goes, uh, <laughs> Some girls were talking to Cap, and the Cap was like, hey, these girls want to go, uh, want us to meet them at this club. And I'm like, oh, all right. Thinking like, hey, th- maybe this will work. Me and Cap, just the two biggest players out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Two of the w- most regular white dudes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so we, we go to this club, and we get there, and it's the girls and their boyfriends. And I'm like, oh, this makes way more sense. that They were just like on the road friend zoning us. Yeah. And uh, so we hung out for like 10 minutes. I'm like, dude, we got to get the fuck out of here. I don't want to just hang out with normal people. Yeah. And uh, and so then we went back and I walked up to my hotel room and I opened the door and and Terrell was just slaying it. (laughs) Oh, right. Oh, you're working. I had to share a room with him. Oh, my God. And he just goes, oh, man, I forgot to lock it. Sorry, bro. And I'm just like. Wow. Yeah. And then I walked over to Caparillo's room. I'm like, hey, can I hang out in here? Terrell's with, with that chick from the club. And he's like, Big Dick? Oh, yeah. yeah I mean, frightening. To where I'm like, maybe I shouldn't stay in the room. Bigger dick than Leslie Jones? Way bigger. Okay. <laughs> yeah. when, when, mean? mean? When Terrell hit me up later to tell me that mean? he was done, he was like, the text he sent me was like, bro, I'm finished up. Sorry you had to see me lay in a yard and a half of dick. Oh, <laughs> wow, that's a cool yeah. thing to say. Yeah. Yeah, I've never said that out loud before. No. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Athletic Grange. Yeah. This is my athletic voice. voice. Hello. Um, today's episode is brought to you by my favorite, Athletic Greens, mm. the health and wellness company that makes comprehensive daily nutrition really, really, really simple. Busy schedules, poor sleep, exercise, the environment, work stress, or simply not eating enough of their right foods, Bobby, can leave Bobby deficient in key nutritional areas. AG1 by Athletic Greens Kalila, (laughs) the category-leading superfood product, brings comprehensive (laughs) and convenient daily nutrition to you, everybody. I'm an ex-athlete, but I still try. I still do pretty... uh, is it the word rigorous workout? You do. You're sweating um, right now. This is a very, yes, I'm sweating right now. Thanks, Gil. I just finished yoga. Okay. But right after yoga, yeah. I'm going to nourish my body with AG1. Bobby, on the other hand, uses it for different reasons. He never eats veg- vegetables ever. So this is his way of <laughs> getting have? in his vitamins yeah, and his right. minerals all in one scoop. They invest in the most absorbable and natural resource ah. of each ingredient and go above and beyond in third-party testing to ensure their customers continue to receive the highest quality and best daily nutritional habits on the planet. 
To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you an immune-supporting free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase if you visit athleticgreens.com slash belly today. Again, simply visit athleticgreens.com slash belly to take control of your health and give AG1 a try. We've talked about on on the Comedy Store podcast, but um, I apologize about New York. No apology. No, I know. Whatever. What happened? Well, Freddie, Freddie Lockhart. You know Freddie Lockhart? I'm familiar, yes. He's a friend of yours. Yeah, he is. Freddie goes, dude, can Rick host for you in New York? And I go, all right. And, and Freddie, by the way, Freddie's playing every every angle of this. He hits me up and he's like, dude, Bobby wants you to open for him. <laughs> In New York. Oh, oh wow! And I'm like, really? That's clever. Yeah, and he's like, yeah, it's great. We we got the setup. We're gonna go. It's like six nights or something. I'm just like, sweet, six wow. nights in New York. And I go, what are we doing? Where are we staying? Oh, we we got a room. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, but where was that room? Uh, it, he was just renting a basement room in a brownstone in Harlem, and terrible, right? It was terrifying. Cold. It was cold. Uh, there was just a communal shower. I mean, it was literally like a dungeon <laughs> in some brownstone, and it was. So at that time, his stomach hurt bad. Yeah, like how bad? Uh, I, I was vomiting uh, four to ten times every day. A double dragon. Yeah, <laughs> well, not quite, but it, it was more What's just a double dragon? projectile. That's where you're shitting and ways. shitting and throwing. Up. I, I wasn't shitting because I I do I couldn't get double any. dragon. All yeah, the, nothing would process I never had that a far. Term for it, double dragon. Double drag. I've done it. <laughs> right. Yeah. So you were double dragging it. Sure. You show up at the club. Yep. And uh, I see you. I don't know you that well. This is 15 years ago. Yeah, about 15. And I go, get up, you little pussy. <gasps> yeah. I, I was, he was on the ground. I was so sick. I was laying on a concrete floor backstage at a comedy club that was just filthy. Filthy. Oh. But my body was overheating so much, I needed the coolness of the concrete. So you were, died, you were dying of hepatitis, and you were... Basically. And you told him to get up? You yeah, but it? I didn't... Fuck, fuck, man. I didn't know nothing yeah. about no hepatitis or no <laughs> nothing, man. I just thought he had a bad, bad burrito. Yeah. Yeah, but... Still, I, did, I, I that's I, what I did was wrong, and and, and this is the last time I apologize for. He's apologized. I've probably. apologized for a thousand times. Yeah, at, at I'm not least doing it again, times. right? Yeah, your little little belly had the diabetes. There's no, man. there's no reason to apologize. Your tiny little baby, where you were sick, like a little baby, huh? What? So I kicked you a couple times. What yeah. happened, baby? <laughs> what? Listen, and it's. <laughs> This is a very I reversed it. I reversed it. I reversed it. Yeah, you did. You I'm, took no, the power I'm, gonna go, I'm not going down on this one. Yeah. Right, <laughs> little baby. Yeah, y- your tom tom. Our relationship at that point <laughs> was basically just you harassing me. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry, but I mean that it wasn't like exclusive. So when you, so you got, so that then I what did I do for you though? Uh, so when, while I, <laughs> when I'm sick like that. Uh, I, I had unchecked diabetes. I didn't know I was diabetic. Oh, oh. shit. So I, my body was going through ketoacidosis. Yes. And I was Which basically... Which is really dangerous, by the way. If you go into DKA, that is a very... That is like a critical thing someone goes through. You can't that just pick him and call him a pussy. That was a game we used to play a, as a kid. Oh. What? <laughs> ketoacidosis. <laughs> ketoacidosis? Yeah, real fun. That is dangerous. I, I didn't know the information. You didn't know. I didn't... Even I didn't know. So I just was sick a lot. And uh, so... The only thing that would make my stomach would start spasming real bad. And so if I took a sip of water, I'd throw up a sip of water. Ugh. And so uh, <laughs> the only thing that would calm it down was if I took like a scalding hot bath or shower. And it would make my muscles relax enough to where I would at least stop vomiting. Shit. And so I'm telling Bobby and he's like, well, why didn't you do that? I'm like, because we're staying in a basement in Harlem and there's a communal shower and I can't just... What did my what what did I do for a little baby baby? <laughs> Poppy. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's the what did Poppy? Yeah, thank you, Poppy. Pop- Poppy. Poppy gave me his hotel uh, key and said, "Skip the rest of the show. Go do what you need to do. Take care of yourself." Because I care. Does he wow. care about people yeah. who I work with? That's right. And my employees. So what I did for this guy was I go go to my nice fancy hotel yep. room and take a nice bath. Yeah. And I found little tiny brown pubic hairs all over that bathtub. I don't know if that's true or not. It's not. No. <laughs> it's not true at all. No. 
Because I don't shed them. I keep them. I know. <laughs> they stay right where they are. So how long after um, New York did you find out that you legitimately had? Um... Uh, it was probably, uh, I don't know, six months to a year after that I finally was diagnosed correctly. I'd just been misdiagnosed for years. Oh, my so, God. So uh, I, I didn't develop. I have type 1 diabetes. I didn't develop it till I was older. So I think the doctors I was seeing thought I was too old to have type 1. Is type 1 the best kind? Type 1 is usually um, a kid. Usually yeah, it's, it's juvenile children, diabetes yeah. is what they used to call it. That's hilarious. Um, so, yeah, I developed that juvenile have, diabetes at juvenile 25. Diabetes? That's hilarious. Yeah, and uh, and then I, was, I wasn't fat enough to... For them to think I had type two, basically. Mm. Mm. So, um, yeah. So I finally went into diabetic shock and spent seven days in the <laughs> ICU, and uh, that's how I found out. You oh almost died. I was pretty close. Are you being real? Yeah, yeah. Yes, that is so dangerous. So you were in a hospital for seven days on a deathbed. I was in the ICU for four and a half days, and then two more days in the shitty part of the hospital in Burbank. And I mean, Pimo must have been so concerned. I mean, uh, like the people who like I was close to just had basically accepted that I was just sick all the time. It, it was probably Aww. three or four years of just being sick always. Yeah. And it would come in waves or sometimes it was way worse than other times. And I'm sure it was all based on diet. And, you know, I didn't how, know. How were they misdiagnosed that for so long? Couldn't they just do like a, a, they a just, routine? Sh- they checked your sugar? They could have just... Sh- Literally done A1C a blood C test. Or? Yeah, they could have done any of those things, but they didn't. And I was going to doctors. I didn't have insurance, so I was paying out of pocket mm-hmm. and going to specialists for the wrong things, basically. And that's kind of when I learned, like, if if you go to the wrong doctor, then they're probably going to diagnose you with something, and it's probably not going to be right. Huh. So, wow. like, I, since I had stomach problems was my main issue, I went and saw a gastroenterologist, yeah. and he gave me a bunch of bullshit about oh, this is what I have, and started listing them off. I'm like, damn. And then I went that was home, scary. Googled it, and like half of them were like, this is not a real condition. I'm like, does he not know I have Google? But, <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Well, you have that little apparatus to get out of your stomach, too. What does that do? Yeah, this is my, uh, no, it's a Dexcom. It just oh. tells me my blood sugar. Oh. Keeps well, you know what, updated. dude? I'm so glad that you discovered that. I think I told you you might have had diabetes in Caroline's spot. It's it's possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I, I don't recall really anything other than... Six months of pain, that's you, fine. You predicted it? Yeah, I think I said it you might have... He knows it's coming. Yeah, kitsarasarosis. It's the only <laughs> diagnosis he knows. Wait, how do I say that again? Kitsarasarosis? Well, we, we, Ketoacidosis. Kitsarasarosis. Keto- <laughs> <laughs> what is... I, I, wait, before we continue, I have to figure out how to pronounce this word. Keto? Keto? Acid? Acid? Osis. Ketoacidosis. Yes. That's what you had, Pretty Dave. Good. Yeah, that's bad. Good. Can I ask you a little side note, too? Yeah. I've always wanted to ask you. You don't seem like you fuck that good. Probably not. I bet. Yeah. I, I mean, I've never had anyone. Like to differ. Guys shaped like Rick always have the biggest dicks. Dudes that's not, they... that's yeah. what I... That's not what I said, though. But but uh, I'm... <laughs> oh, he's a big, I, I, big dick. I believe he has so a big dick. You're arguing I that you're both right. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm arguing that we're both right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, nice, Bobby. Nice. We're both right. Yeah, okay. yeah. We're both right. When it's so big, you kind of don't have to do a lot of work. I know, but think, I'm just saying that, yeah, privately, right, we, if, with his wife, I'm sure it's great time. I'm just saying that as an ex- That tempo? Like, <laughs> That's, that was a great tempo, right? Pace. But I'm just saying- A lot of slapping. I wouldn't pay to watch it, is what I'm saying. Yeah. I, oh, okay. He's not a good performer. Enough. Do you think people would pay to watch you? 100%. I, I think yeah. I'd be the number one on GoFundMe. Here's what <laughs> I'll tell you. Wrong <laughs> website. <laughs> not GoFundMe. What's that? For website? someone with oh, a OnlyFans. Cool. Only <laughs> GoFundMe. <laughs> I'd start a GoFundMe. I'd start a GoFundMe to put that out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to say this about you. Yeah. And please don't take offense to this. I Rick, probably your won't. penis is huge. Congratulations. I probably Thanks. won't. But for someone, for someone with such an average sized penis, you do not do a lot of work. You should be doing a lot more What's the for how average your penis size you know, is. Effort would be, you know, appreciated, it sounds like. <laughs> like, you should be eating pussy. Okay, like a I, 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 okay can I say this? <laughs> Just like that. Yeah. <laughs> if a magical man showed up at my door, mm-hmm. right, and he's wearing a blue suit, mm-hmm. he has a little tag that says NFL. <laughs> Okay. Right? He shows up at my door. I'm a commissioner for the NFL. Okay. I don't know how it works. Yeah. I go, thanks. You need, you lost? No, I'm here for you. 
what is it? We, we want you to be the new running back, right, for the L.A. Rams. Okay. Right? From the commission. I go, all right, I'll do it. Now I'm at starting, right? Yeah. My right. size, you know what I mean? Big guys. I take the ball. They hand it off to me. Yeah. And before I do that, the quarterback goes, just do the best. Just do it. Try your best. You know what I mean? Fuck good. Basically is what he's saying. Mm-hmm. I'm never. I'm gonna go two feet and I'm dead, right? Mm. So it's like with sex. I don't. There's the, the worst. <laughs> I try to figure it I out. Shut the fuck up. Hold on. Go ahead. I try to figure it out. up. Shut the fuck up. I'm gonna make this analogy work. So I know this analogy. <laughs> shut <laughs> the fuck up. No. Stop. 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 Rick, tell I know they're not Hold on. I, I want him to give us his uh, interpretation of what you just said. And we'll keep continuing. All right. All right. Fine. So <laughs> thus far, yeah. You think? <laughs> yeah. Just to be clear. To be. All right. <laughs> When you're trying to fuck, there's 11 giant dudes <laughs> preventing you from succeeding at... <laughs> it's very no, confusing. No, no, no. It's not as if... That's that makes not, sense. That is so funny. That's a, I didn't go, hut, hut, hike, and there's no nobody else there, right? Okay. It's not a fucking... Ge- my point is that... Are you doing... Are you, okay. okay, go ahead. Keep going. Go ahead. You're doing tryouts. You're just tryouts right now. No, what I'm saying is, is that even uh, what I'm saying is, I'll, I'm going to get to the clear right here. Don't l- make that face. I'm just trying. To I don't get... like your face right now. Sorry, 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 sorry. Because I know I'm not going to be able to clear this you up. Clear it. You but I'm going to give it a shot, right? Clear it. What I'm saying is, is that even if I know how to play, be a running back, this is not, and I do the best I can. I yeah. show them all my moves. I, st- there's nothing I can do, right? That's just what God gave me. There's nothing you can do. So in sex too, right? It's the same thing. It's like, I'm doing the best I can, right, for what God gave me, but it's still not good enough for you. Do you think that fame has made you a a, a worse lover? 100%. Damn. <laughs> Why? It's just you don't have, you feel like you don't have to do a lot of work. You're out there with that star dick. Too. Yeah, it's a star dick. Oh, star, 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 star dick dilemma. Yeah. yeah, it's a star dick dilemma. So, it, yeah. to you mentally, it's an honor anytime someone to else gets you. to play the game. No, 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 that's not it. You, you're telling, you're basically looking me in the eye and saying, "You should be so thankful you're mounting me." <laughs> no, that's not it. He's a starting running back of the LA Rams. Yeah, yeah. The LA Rams <laughs> running back. You should be. Don't thankful. ever talk to me like that. Again. <laughs> <laughs> My point. <laughs> no. When I was younger, right? When you don't have comedy, a dream, mm-hmm. when you have, you don't make a lot of money, you know what I mean? You don't know what you do with, want, want to do with your life. You're in your early 20s. And then you have that, you know what I mean? That early 20s horniness, right? Mm-hmm. It's all you think about. Yeah. Right? So back then, it's like, it was my, I was also sober, right? For at that time, 12 years in my 20s, all through my 20s, I was sober. So when you don't have a drug, when you don't have and sex and being, being with women becomes your number one thing, right? So when I, when, when I was in bed with women, I, it was almost as like it was like a God-like uh, experiment almost. Like I'm, I want to make them think that I'm the biggest Casanova. It's all about them, not me. Mm-hmm. And as you get older, it becomes more about you because you have other things. I don't know what I'm talking about today. I like it. Yeah, Why? Yeah. Sex is just not the number one thing for you anymore. It used to be the number one thing. It's no longer the number one thing. I think that's what you're reading. Do you still <laughs> fuck a lot? All I do, 24 <laughs> hours a day, is just, fuck. Is just get out there. <laughs> yeah, I've got, with, with I've your got wife. two kids, and yeah. you know, I just say, hey, you're one now. Go play. <laughs> we're going to fuck. It's time. It's strange for, to me because it's like I never thought of you being a father or having kids, and you did all that. Yeah. That's amazing. And I hear you're a good father. Uh, yeah, I try to be. Yeah, you're there all the time. Yeah, I R- watch the kids all day. And she works? Uh huh. Wow. Yeah. So you know everything about your kids? I do, yeah. And they must love you so much. I think they enjoy me. I, you know, they definitely see me as like the, the one that's going to, you know, my one year old, for instance, wakes up in the morning and he just screams, Dada until I go and take him out. Like, he knows I'm going to be the one that's going to come get him. So. Oh, what a wonderful human experience. Did you ever do what Rick does? <laughs> Excuse me? Could you ever do that? 100%. If I'm in a room and I hear anyone no, like, saying, Daddy, okay. right? Even if it wasn't 
my kid, I'm there. Okay, because you're you're a comic, right? So you don't go up until the nighttime. Yeah. So let's suppose I I'm working during the day. Which and is I'm not like happen, Bobby, okay. you have to care for the kids during from these uh, this hour, you know, from nine a.m. to five p.m. Yeah. till I come home, yeah. and then I take over. Uh -huh. Would you be able? to? That and I'll call Samantha. Who's Samantha? My night nurse. <laughs> it's not nighttime. Day nurse. <laughs> I have a day nurse and See, night nurse. Bobby's on the right plan. When I tell people I have kids, they go, can, can you afford a nanny? I go, I don't have a nanny. I just take care of them. And they're like, look at me like, <laughs> Oh, wow. This is Los Angeles. You don't have kids until someone else can take care of them. <laughs> oh, That's wow. So yeah. So you're doing it old school. Yeah, I'm old school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. By necessity, but yeah. Do you, hit, you don't hit them, do you? No. <laughs> My parents didn't but even hit want, me. That's you, how you I ended to, up. You this want way. to? You want to? I don't. Okay, good. No, my bad. Other people's kids for sure. For sure. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. No, my, my kids are cool. Oh, so you never were hit? Never. Wow. Yeah, that, I mean, you know, people. I definitely think feel I could have used a few whacks from time to time. I don't but, think so, dude. That's but, how you raise a person with integrity. Yeah, I think you have it integrity. Could be. I do. Here's another thing people don't know about you. I think that you're the, one of the best riffers out there. And I want to learn how you to want, riff. You want to learn how to riff? Yeah, because I've never learned how to riff, right? Let's play it out. So let's play it out. How do you riff? So let's say I'm in the audience, okay. right? You're on stage, yeah. right? And I go, you suck. Uh-huh. What would you say? I'd, I'd go, get this guy the fuck out of here. <laughs> oh. No, you that's not true. Take him out of the room. Yeah. Um, no, you, you just, if someone is aggressive like that, then yeah. you just, you go twice as aggressive right at him. Because you're so good at that. You're so mean in in a good way. Yeah, you gotta. You know, it, I look at performing comedy like it's joining the military, and that's you sacrifice one for the good of many. So if you have to attack one, or you find two or three enemies in the crowd, and then you make it about how the rest of us are against them, and that way people don't take their side ever. Yeah, and you can't you can't attack women unless the woman starts shouting or acting intoxicated, and then everyone in the world hates them. And then you ah, extra you, hard at them. Right. But you can't go after somebody that doesn't say anything. I mean, you can. It, it just depends. P if people think you're truly being a bully, you'll lose some of the crowd. But if they think you're being mean to someone who's probably a piece of shit, then they go, I'm, I'm glad someone's finally saying it. Yeah, because what I've done on stage is I'll see somebody in the front row and I did this last week, which is not good. And I go, there was this guy with, you know, his big face in the front row. And I go, look at your fat cheeks. And I poked his cheek. Yeah. Right? And as I took my finger away, you could feel the skin go back. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? Continue. So I made a little thing, went whoop, like that. And I backed up and looked at his face. And he, went, he was like, oh. oh yeah. And he did a sad face. And he go, ha, ha, ha. And I kind of looked away. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean, like that's the see, oh, that's fuck. the key. That's not good. Once once you do something that's mean or the crowd isn't into, you just got to move on as quickly as possible. I know, but one of my point is that you, when you're an audience member, you should understand that like anything goes right. So, <laughs> that's their fault. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if I poke your, you know what I mean, if, and then the, then it, if anything goes, then okay, let's suppose I'm in the crowd. You're doing a set, right? Yeah. I'm like you're a fat cunt, Bobby. Yeah. What would you say? Now, do I know you or no? No. It's Kalila. My, <laughs> it's Kalila in the audience. <laughs> yeah, like, you live with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be fucked up. Yeah. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> don't ever do that. That would make me so mad if you did that. Uh, really? Yeah, there's my girlfriend again. <laughs> I don't know what to... I think if it was a normal person, I would just be like... I think I would just agree. Yeah, okay. You're uh, a fat guy. I know, I know, I am. Not, thank you. Thank you is always thank a good you, yeah, thank When someone you. says something really yeah. insulting, yeah. just take it with pride. I, I think because I know I'm a piece of shit. Do you feel like a piece of shit? Yeah. Yeah. I think deep down in the stage, on, when I'm on stage, deep down inside, I mean, I feel like I'm a piece of shit, right? And so I attack people, you know what I mean, as a defense mechanism to keep people away, right? But when somebody actually does say something personal on stage, like a, a comics can really get me. Mm. You know what I mean? There's a two or three things that a comic can say to me that will ruin my week. Mm. Like I won't, I'll lose sleep over it. Yeah. You know? No, no reason for that. No, but I have sensitive. You, you, do you have sensitive spots? 
I maybe. I I, I don't think, know. I think you do. People don't say anything to me though. I, like people in general, they either don't say anything at all, or you know they they'll just bring up one thing that they liked that I said. You're beloved. No, he he's an anomaly in the sense that like in terms of fashion too. <laughs> Obviously, very stylish. I have a closet I don't want, full I'm not of Mossimo. Fun of I'm not. <laughs> You don't. I don't want to brag. I've yeah, got, I probably have eight or nine Mossimo tees, <laughs> various Vs. Please wear one one night. I, I I think I wore one two nights ago. Did you really? Fuck yeah. All right, I didn't know that. Yeah, pe- people. But so th- this is Rick. So I'm gonna right. <laughs> Just you know, if you thirty years from now, if no one ever mentioned your name again, never saw you again, and somebody goes, "What impression am I doing?" I go, "That's Rick Ingram." That's it. <laughs> Yeah, I just see you standing there. You know what I mean? Minding your own business. Yeah. Right? You don't say much sometimes. Yeah. You're quiet. But then you go on stage and you rip it. Yeah. Uh, You're like a fucking ripper, dude. People have told me it's very unassuming when I get on stage. Like, that's not what I thought no. this was going to be at all. Did you know this, too? Mm. People call in and they go, I don't want to follow him. Yeah. No, I've done that on a Monday where, you know, I'll, all week, I don't want to follow Rick. And then they do it. But my point is that other comics do that, too. Yeah, they used to screw me pretty bad in, uh, like, the Tommy era. Yeah. Um, there was six or seven comics who just put out there they won't go up after me. And so my spots just kept getting late. later and later. Oh. Like, everyone else, as they got better, their spots got better. Mine just started slowly dwindling towards the back of the lineup. And then eventually got to the point that I, he would just put me on the side. Oh, he would just say "pop in," and I would be like, "Why do I have a pop in?" Because it was it was basically only used like if you're working on a Tonight Show set. Like yeah, he would put you in a pop in. So I go, "Why am I doing a pop in?" And he'd be like, "Well, I had too many people complaining, so I had to put you on the side so I know the right time to fit you in." Oh, and so it was like even though the lineup was set, half the comics would show up late. And so he didn't want there to be a chance that I would get up earlier and then Caparillo or someone would show up, you know, 30 minutes later than they're supposed to, but then have to go up after me. Yeah, there's all these like internal little squabbles, especially with lineups. It's such an interesting little thing where there are people bitch and complain. And it's like, especially when you're a regular and you call in week by week and you don't get any spots. I don't know. Were you ever there? Was I ever where? In the last 10 years, were you ever like months go by and you didn't get a spot? No. Yeah, I've always gotten spots. Yeah. I've, I've I couldn't imagine a... not getting them. Yeah. I think, I, I don't know what I would do. I remember when it switched from Tommy to Adam, the amount of times that you harassed poor Adam Egot because he wouldn't let you double dip. Oh, yeah. Um. I mean, poor guy. What he, ha- what kind of phone calls he has to field on on a daily basis. I mean, it's probably the most thankless job. Yeah, it's just got to be terrible. Imagine being. I would be great at it, but I know because you you're okay with saying no to people. Yeah, I'm constantly telling. I, I told Emily a couple of weeks ago. I used to tell Adam all the time. Just get me on the payroll as assistant talent coordinator. And I'll handle just the negative calls. <laughs> <laughs> really? I don't want to call anyone and say, here are your spots. I don't want to call anyone to say, you know, great job. Yeah. I just want to call people and go, stop calling. We don't have stage time for you. Let me ask you this. Okay, let's say I'm let's say my name is Bruce McFizzins. <laughs> Legend. Legend. Legendary Bruce McFizzins. <laughs> yeah. Bruce McFizzins from Corpus Christi. Sure. Right? In the early 80s, right? Brooke McFizzins, <laughs> right? Guy, yeah. Co-hosted the Late, Late, Late Show. Yeah. Right? Which was on 3 in the morning. Yep. He was after Tom Snyder. Right. After Tom Snyder, <laughs> yeah. right? Rook, Bruce McFizzins. Fizzins, Bruce McFizzins. What? What? The worst fake name of all time. No, there's, <laughs> there's a V and Z in it. Yeah. Fizzins. Fuck you, man. It's he's t- fucking foreign. It's tough. He's from Europe, dude. Yeah, he's from... Bruce McFizzins, He's right? Scottish, yeah. And so he, you know, signed with a big agency, was on a sitcom. Now it's rolling into the early 90s, okay. late 90s. He's not getting that much. Very Still very funny on stage. Yeah. You have to call him to say, you can't perform ever again at the store. Yeah. You'll be able to do that. Yeah. Make the call. Ring, ring. Bruce. 
Hey, it's Rick at the Comedy Store. Hello, Rick. Um, <laughs> Hello, Rick. Is that you? Yeah, it's me, man. Listen. Oh, my God. It, it, the, the other night when you were on stage. Yeah, listen. You, no, no, hold on. Let me say something real quick, right? Bruce, I don't got time for <laughs> this, man. <laughs> Rick, Rick, I just want to say, when you were on stage, yeah. I thought, oh, my God, this Richard Pryor white guy, really good. Yeah, listen. <laughs> We all agree. I love you. Me and my family love it. When we break, we we, we break none. Yeah. We break none. When you break <laughs> none? Yeah, yeah. I'm bread, Indian. Bread, non-bread? I'm, yeah, I'm Indian. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. You, you Bru- can't tell- Bruce McPhison <laughs> from <laughs> India. You can't, from, yeah. you can't tell I'm doing an Indian accent? thought it was Scottish. Scottish. Yeah, I didn't know. I well, anyway, he's from was... Scotland too as well. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Uh, um, anyway. <laughs> anyway. So why are you calling? Listen, man, I'm calling because... <laughs> It's been a hell of a run, man, and you very done, good run. Yeah, you've done very really run, good. run, 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 like the Olympic. And I just wanted to let you know, I think the Laugh Factory is the place for you. <laughs> you're, done here. you're done here. We don't have time for it anymore, man. No one wants this this crazy what about foreigner my, what about, act, man. What about my bit? Take a cue from. What about my bit about Bombay? Yeah, take a cue from Yakov Smirnov, man. <laughs> Brandon Whoa. Missouri is buying. Wow. All right. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Check out betterhelp.com slash belly for 10% off of your first month. BetterHelp. You guys, um, we've talked about BetterHelp many, many times, probably thousands of times. Yeah. And during the pandemic, we um, did a lot of online therapy through BetterHelp. We just love this um, business. Um, Check out betterhelp.com slash belly for 10% off your first month. What is BetterHelp? Tell them, babe. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. And honestly, some days I don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. You guys, mental health is not a joke. Bobby and I deal, as you guys know, with a lot of issues. Unload the stressors and get some unbiased feedback. You'd be pretty surprised at what you might gain from it and see if it's for you. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and Tiger Belly listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp help.com slash belly that's b-e-t-t-e-r-h-e-l-p dot com slash belly for 10 percent off your first month like when yakov show, showed up yeah again i like it yeah don't you like it yeah yakov's like a super nice dude most of the dudes from the 80s that were around when i showed up were all huge douches and they all still had that mentality like it's 1988, and I just did a evening at the Improv. That's right. And I'm still doing the same jokes from evening at the Improv in '88. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like, it, it was baffling. When I started working there, I couldn't believe one, like the lineups. I'm like, I knew two or three of the people, and the other people, I'm like, who the fuck are these people? Yeah. And then I watched them, and I, I mean, I knew enough about comedy, but I didn't realize that they were going to all do the exact same act. Every f- night. You're talking like, about my act. <laughs> you don't have any jokes that are from the 1980s that don't translate to make sense. Like, I would, All right. So if I'm talking about uh, how Princess Lewinsky. Diana died. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, I see. Yeah, that type of shit where you're just like, what? Like, yeah. Argus was doing OJ jokes in 2005. That's right. And it was like. Really good OJ jokes, though. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Top notch. <laughs> yeah. Just so confusing where I'm like, why the fuck is he? Well, OJ's in the news. And he yeah. Goes, no, <laughs> yeah, no yeah. he isn't. Do you remember, uh, 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 do, you, do you know an Argus Hamilton OJ joke? Uh, was, God, I can't even remember it now. <laughs> and I've thought about this, and I love him too. Do yeah. you love him? Yeah, Argus is great. Yeah, anyone that can s- hang around that long is all right by me. And I, he's a nice guy. He saved my life a couple of times. Yeah. I love him. But, um... At least he's writing you, jokes. Yeah, he is writing jokes. So they're not always great, but at least he's writing them. But like, is there something that can happen in your career where you went, okay, that's enough, I'm done? I mean, it's hard to say. I don't know. I like, I feel like I'll always want to perform, but at the same time, you don't want to be the sad dude that everyone talks about. But that's our destiny. It probably is. I, I mean, at least I think you, at the end of the day, that's our destiny. At least you get to perform elsewhere if you choose. I mean, I, I legitimately can't get a spot at a, a single other club. Uh, uh, that's so. why. That's why. That's why you're here. I know. Okay, that's why you're here. I'm. That's. Th- how long have I told you about this? I lo- I, I want this guy on this show. A long you know, time. A people, long time. Yeah, people will send me clips and be like, "Bobby Lee talked about you." And it's yeah. always nice. I'm it's like, always nice. God. I never say anything negative. Because I was ready to start a war. 
No, no, you wouldn't. I think you would. I think you would. <laughs> I think you would absorb it. Uh, yeah, I'd be like, okay. If I said something negative, you would absorb it. It would turn into like some sort of weird disease later. I mean, most likely. Yeah, yeah. I would. I would get type three diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I want to say that, Bobby. I want to say that, like, you know, in I know that Bill Burr, me, Sarah Tiana, there's just a bunch of us that look at you and I go and go, and this is the last time I'm going to say it, but go, why isn't this guy bigger, the biggest thing? I honestly think that you have that skill level. As a, Thank uh, you. yeah, your point of view is right for me. Um, anyway. Yeah, but, I just, I think you should be able to mock whatever needs to be mocked. And I don't know that that's something that the current climate is comfortable with. Yeah. So, like, people will always talk about, like, I'll be, I'll be talking to a black dude in the audience and I'll say stuff that you can see, like, 26 year old white women get very uncomfortable. Yeah. And then the black dude and I are having a great time. He's laughing. Everyone's having fun. And then afterwards, people will be like, dude, weren't you scared? I'm like, no. Yeah. I, I wasn't making fun of the guy for being black. I was making fun of the black guy because he's an asshole. And I've that never, should be I've, okay. I've never had, actually, a black person be offended. No, they very rarely anything. are. Like, I've said the most fucked up things and looked at black people, and they're just into it. Yeah. Because they get it. It's just these... It's the whites. Yeah, just it's the people that I'm uh I'm now in charge of. Thanks to you. <laughs> yeah, 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 you're in charge of it now. So I'm gonna tell them cut this shit out. <laughs> like Thanksgiving at the at in the main room. Yeah, was just well Thanksgiving white haired. Yeah, old Th people like what do we? Thanksgiving is a horrible time for stand up comedy at the comedy store. It is the worst because it was so hard. Crowds are mostly people who are visiting. Mm. And it's uh, it's usually one person that lives here and then family that's come out yeah. to visit them. And so they have different senses of humor, and people are very uncomfortable being true to what makes them laugh. So normally on a random day in July, you're going to have you know, a group of four come in, they're friends, they're watching you perform, you say something that's inappropriate, they're going to laugh because it's funny. But they come in Thanksgiving weekend with their mom and dad and their uncle Larry and a couple of their cousins. Now they can't laugh because if they laugh at something fucked up, you say, yeah. now they're going to go, oh, my dad saw me laugh at Bobby Lee, say this or that. Yeah. So everyone's just, no one's being true to themselves. But it's not just not laughing. It's a visceral hatred. <laughs> like I was on stage and there was an old white man who looked like he should have pins, like medals, mm -hmm. right? And he and a collar that has like little, what do you call it? You know how Jean Luc Picard has it, like a purple heart. Yeah, little medals on their neck. Oh, medals! What did I say? I thought you I thought like a metal piece, like a fucking shrapnel, <laughs> oh, like a pick yeah. one. You know, shrapnel. You know when they see yeah. ID and it explodes. You know they have shrapnel yeah, on their faces. Piece of you know? a grenade. <laughs> yeah, yeah. lodge in their eye. No, I was thinking like maybe like <laughs> you know. I think maybe like a pick line. You know when someone's really sick. Oh, you said right. an old white man, so I was like, oh, oh no, I maybe he has cancer. Oh. Don't make fun of his pick line, Bobby. Yeah. Anyway, it's these Christian. <laughs> oh fuck it, man. I mean, it's like what are you saying? Man? You absolutely <laughs> should make fun of old white men with cancer treatment. I think that's, <laughs> yeah. that's 100 percent on the board. Let's do that. what they've done to this country, what? The, to this world. Yeah, these yeah. old whites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The olds, the whites, they gotta go. I'm all, I'm all down with that. You know, but the but the new but you have a problem with new whites as well. <laughs> the new yeah, whites. yeah. The the new age whites. Are yeah, I don't like the, the new age. The younger new age whites. Listen, the problem with young <laughs> young people in general, yeah. anyone who's 35 or younger, yeah. so 35 to 21, because otherwise they can't really get into comedy clubs, they have spent their whole life with this false morality based completely on their social media appearance. And so people aren't true to themselves at all. It used to be you'd say fucked up things to like your seven or eight friends, and your friends would know you're kind of fucked up, but it would be fine. But now everyone just wants to appear to be something. So, you know, every time a celebrity dies, every person on earth was so inspired by that person. And it'll be like the strangest, like when Prince died, and Prince was an amazing musician, but I never heard anyone talking about how influential Prince was in their life yeah. until the moment he died. Yeah. And then everyone was just like, my God, 
I could still think of the first time I heard a Prince song. And you're like, yeah, it was an hour ago when you found <laughs> out he was dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're so full of shit. Yeah. But it's like Prince is a bad example, I guess, because he was actually beloved. But yeah. Yeah, you somebody yeah. else, maybe? Yeah. There, there's just a lot In this of... this house, you can talk about, <laughs> how about Prince. How about um, Millie from Millie Vanilli? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People will, people will just... Did they both die? Be inspired. I think one of them's alive. Oh, yeah. He was doing Geico commercials or something. Oh, oh no, really? Years ago. Oh, that's yeah. so sad. But happy for him. Wait, yeah. that good for him. Yeah, good for him. Yeah. I mean, he was being mocked in it, but it was like. How did one of them die? I, I have I think, no um, I think he jumped off a, he jumped off a building, I think. I mean. As my mom would call it, suicide. Yeah. I like. And there was I, an old I, joke when he did that, right? Where people in the audience, like people were down there yelling. Are you gonna get? Are you gonna jump, or are you gonna get somebody to jump for you? Damn, cold. No, it's just. But a I good never, joke, nonetheless. Well, I didn't say it right. Number one, I fucked it up. I didn't, number one, I didn't say it right. Number two, it just sounded mean. And it sounded <laughs> yeah, mean. It, it sounded was like mean. the poking the cheek. Not only that, it's like I didn't even say the words right. Like I fumbled it, so yeah. I fucked up the joke. Can I get another shot at it? Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um. No, I, I'll fuck it. I'm gonna look that up. Nilly Vanilli, did he die? Are you gonna jump? Or are you gonna someone else? Oh, see, I fucked it up again. Don't do no, but let me finish. Hey, are you gonna jump? Or are you gonna get someone else to jump for you? Yeah, that's better. Mm. That's better. Thank you. Uh, Politis was found dead of a suspected alcohol and prescription drug yeah, overdose in a hotel room. Oh, well, the, the joke doesn't even fucking. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't anymore. It doesn't even fucking work. There was no jump. But I guarantee the name on that pill bottle was someone else's. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Too far? Yeah, no, no that's not too far. That's a perfect good. amount. What, what, yeah, per- perfect, perfect amount. Yeah. Um, so from now, so you can, you don't do the road at all either. Wait, no. I just read that the real Millie Vanilli singer died of COVID like this week. The one who actually sang yes. on the, on the song. Yes, was prescription. Yeah, whose name was on the fought. prescription. <laughs> oh, he died. Yes, the oh, real. He died man. of COVID. Yes, he died of COVID. Mm-hmm. You never got it, right? His name was John no. Davis. Mm. You never got the cove. I never got. I never got the vids. Yeah, I. I just. I literally went in my house and I would go to the grocery store early in the morning, and then I would go home and I didn't go do anything. I don't have anything. You to know do. what, dude? I want to get to the point of our relationship where, if there's another pandemic, and you have nothing going on, that you and I should get go get a coffee or something. Yeah, I'd never done that with you. No. In fact, I never called you about anything. Nope. <laughs> you, you yeah. I think I want to. You're all, you've always been very nice to me, to my face, but I feel like you keep me afar. That's everybody. Yeah. I feel like he has a... You know what, dude? And I'm okay. Yeah. No, no, no. You know what? You're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. I do keep people afar, and I think I'm a changed man. You think so? I, I don't think I'm going to do it anymore. I don't think you're going to like people once you start No, I think out. I'm going to like you. I think there's a... I think it was a 20-year analysis yeah. about your demeanor sure. that I've analyzed over the years. And what are, what consensus the, is... What does the data say? A minus. A minus. Not bad. B plus. Yeah. Let's go B plus. That, B? Yeah. Let's go strong B. I mean, Feel better? Yeah. I yeah, think yeah. A B. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Listen, people who get A's, those people are pretentious. They are. B's are really the way to go. It yeah. lets people know you're a real human, but you're smarter than most people. Can't you go on the road with Eleanor and do a comedy store... I don't think we have a, a popular enough following. To or let's, you know, my next goal. Let's let's just come on, man. Let's this next year. Yeah. Let it be the Rick Ingram year, Fine. 2022. Can we help Rick Ingram get to that place where I would? Because as a comic, I don't feel comfortable with you not killing it. Yeah. I, I think that you should. I want you to get the shit. Thanks. Yeah. I, I, that would be nice. Can we start with a social media push? Yeah, go ahead. Like right now, he's at four. Let's get him to 10K after yeah. this episode. Yeah, yeah. All right. So and Rick, we'll follow him back as well. Yeah, well, let's follow him back. Let's follow him back for a start there, right? I'm going to, yeah. Yeah. So um, there's me with Harvey Weinstein. Yeah. You and <laughs> Harvey Weinstein's a good one. Yeah. You want that one up top, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you pin that one. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's get Rick to 10 grand, 10,000 followers. Yeah. Right? And if you're listening from Instagram, let's verify him. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm unverified on everything. Yeah, yeah. When people un- go, "Why are you not verified?" I go, uh, uh, "Am I supposed to call someone? I don't know how that works." Yeah, I think you're. I think you're supposed to have management that handles that for you. Uh, Rick, you have a thing that um, I have, which is I don't like asking for things. Uh, yeah, I won't do it. I know. I know you won't, but. I think you should. 
That's what people start are telling me. More. People are saying you got to start asking for stuff. Because I ask I for know. stuff all the time. Yeah. Right? And it sucks to do it. Like, I've, I've, like I'll hear about a movie people are doing, and I'll mm. call and go, is there anything there for me? And my agent will go, we already asked. They said no. Right? But you have to make but those. But sometimes you get it. Yeah. But sometimes I get it. Yeah. Sometimes I make the call and they go, you know what? Yeah, I think you're in the mix now. And, you know. Yeah, see, I don't, but I don't, I don't have, I've never had a manager. I've never had an agent. Oh, I had a manager for about three weeks. And, uh, what happened? Uh, he, he was a, an assistant to a manager at Prince Apato and Young. Uh huh. And, uh, I remember just being like, this is cool. I was like 24, 25 or something at the time. And, uh, he was like, yeah, we're going to start sending you out and this and that. I'm like, great. So he, he didn't call me for like two weeks. I called him every couple of days just being like, hey, what's the deal? And they'd be like, we'll have him call you. It's brutal. Yeah. And uh, so then he calls me and he said, uh, we got an audition for you. You're perfect for it. It's for a drug addict. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll do drug addict. Yeah, That's fine. yeah. And he said, it's, uh, it's in somewhere in, the, somewhere in the valley. It was in Encino or something. And uh, it's for the pilot for this new TV show. And I'm just like, okay, whatever. That's cool. Cool. So... I said, you know, do you have sides for me? Um, I'd been doing commercial auditions for a few years at that point, but I was excited this is going to be my first TV show audition. And uh, so I show up at the audition. I walk in the room and I look around and it's me and I want to say 12 very Hispanic men. And I'm like, what do you mean? How Hispanic? Like they just they look very legitimately blue collar Mexican. And I'm like, Johnny Sanchez. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, this is weird. And they're all larger than me. I'm just like, whatever, okay. Gabriel so the, Iglesias. The lady goes, w- w- <laughs> <laughs> that's, my, that's my demographic. Yeah, that's yeah, who yeah. I'm always up against. Yeah. And they go, uh, I, I go, I'm here. I'm playing a drug addict. And she goes, I don't think you're supposed to be here for this. And I go, oh, oh this is what I was told. And she goes, I'm not sure uh, what your manager told you, but... Um, this part is for a 35-year-old Hispanic crystal meth addict. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay. I, yeah, I guess that's not really me. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, and I go, well, well, should I read it anyway? And she goes, if I send you into that room, they're going to laugh in your and my face. I cannot send you in there. I'm like, all right. And so I, I'm looking at the script. just like I feel like an asshole because I drove all the way over there. And it was to play the part of Crazy 8 on the Breaking Bad pilot. Oh, oh, that and, was and the like, part. That was the part, and like a dude who was a legitimate crystal meth okay, dealing can, gangster. Can I, all right, can, let me let's stop there. Yeah. Okay. What a crush. first of all, that manager, whoever that person did that, yeah. right, should be fired. Well, I called them to to read them the riot act because you know I felt personally slighted, <laughs> and I'm yeah. like, fuck this guy. Yeah. So yeah. I call him and I go, yeah, I need to talk to him. And they said. He's not in right now. I go, he's never in. Have him call me. I need to talk to him. So a week goes by. I don't hear from him. So I call back. I'm just like, I go, what the fuck is the deal? I need to talk to him. And they go, um, I'm going to patch you through to, uh, I think his name was like Joel Zadick or something. Uh, yeah. And uh, and that was the guy he worked under. And so I go, yeah, what's the deal, man? He goes, yeah, he's, uh, he's not with us anymore. And uh, so that's why he didn't call you back because you know we didn't keep him on board and i go oh well that makes sense because that's the role he auditioned for. yeah that's that's the guy <laughs> <laughs> same demo <laughs> just same archetype and honestly that's I, so fucking funny I'm, to me. I'm pretty confident about my acting that i would have crushed that part for sure <laughs> but that's my point though it's like in situations if they would have let you read yeah that's when you in your head go right you think i'm not gonna get this I might as well go crazy. I have nothing to lose. Yeah. Nothing to lose. Yeah. Maybe they'll put me in for something else. Right. There was plenty so of squirrely should... white guys in that show. Yeah, right. Yeah. So whenever you're in that situation, you have to go in. Yeah. And go crazy. Yeah. That's I... what Ed Norton did for that one movie, Primal Fear. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, really? And he's yeah, so that. they couldn't find anybody for that part. So they went to New York, and they did an opening casting. Like, you could, they just did it on fucking buildings and mm-hmm. telephone poles, this he he shows up. He waits eight hours, in like a, there's a thousand people auditioning. Yeah, and he's sitting there going, "I'm not going to get this. Obviously, no one knows who I am. I'm going to go. I'm going to make hard choices." 
Whoa. Like distinct hard choices, and he fucking booked it. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it's this theater actor. Yeah. Kid, you know what I mean? So make sure you go in. So at the end of our podcast, b- b- by the way, thank you so much. You were great. At the end of our podcast, we do a thing called unhelpful advice. Nice. And so they a- they ask us questions. Okay. And then we answer them or not. <laughs> Or give them bad answers. Whatever you want. Who's, who's asking us? He, he, the email. Oh, okay. Email. <laughs> what's, what's, what's up? Uh, before that, you want to promote anything else? You uh, got yeah, a podcast? Yeah, I have I have two podcasts. I have a new podcast I'm doing called Rick Ingram Talks to Strangers that um, I, I talk to just random people who uh, send us direct messages on Twitter or Instagram. And uh, if you want to be a guest, you can uh, send us a message there. Tell us why you're interested. That's great. Fuck it. And uh, yeah, so we we get a lot of fun people because people on social media are are interesting, to say the least. And then I also host the Comedy Store podcast. The Comedy Store podcast, I do. I've done 10 times maybe in my life. I love it. Yeah, it's fun. I love you and Eleanor together. Yeah, Uh a couple of shit talkers. Yeah. I was glad to referee your guys' friendship. Oh. Burying the hatchet. I, I'd so the very it. first time me and Eleanor squashed it out, Rick was there. I, I, I'm dude. so glad you did because I couldn't love Eleanor more. Yeah, she's great. I love her. I, I honestly had never seen two adults just be like, let's just talk about it in a more like healthy Bobby way. Was, yeah, it was very healthy. And Bobby was very defensive. He kept standing up. The first time we did the mm-hmm. thing, we'd be like, well, hold on. I stand up a lot. Yeah. It's like when a bear approaches you, they, they say you have to appear bigger. Smart. So that's, that's, what, that's why that's he stands big, up. Yeah. Big bear moves. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that was an interesting thing because, I, you know, I hadn't talked to her in many, in probably 20 years. Yeah. And I, I hated her more than Stalin. Yeah. Damn. By the way, Stalin, yeah. one of my comedy influences. That's why <laughs> I knew that. So people yeah. respect fear more than yeah. love. Yeah. My number one, Pol Pot. Sure, sure. For me, Pol that Pot, Vlad the Impaler, and then Stalin. For yeah. Me. In terms of comedy, those are all good ones. They're really good. Yeah. But um, yeah, that was a uh, very. Um, I love Big Ol L. Yeah. That's what I call her, Big Ol L. <laughs> big Ol. It's like a little moose. You know what I mean? Yeah. When I see. C- Big old L at the comedy store parking lot. I go, moo, moo to you, L. I've never seen you do that. That's I know, so weird. but from now on. Anyway, do the unhelpful advice. <laughs> unhelpful advice with Rick Ingram. Hey, guys. My name is Rachel. I'm 21 years old. I wouldn't say I necessarily need advice, but today I found out that my boyfriend of five years has been cheating on me for around the last year, give or take. I watched this podcast because of him. So I know he'll probably see this if it makes the cut. Ooh. If you guys would be so obliged to help me shit on him and remind him what an awful no good son of a bitch he is, what would make my heart smile? I held this man down while he went to jail my junior year of high school. And I He found went to jail her junior year of high school? Yeah. And I found out he was cheating after returning home from a Thanksgiving family vacation that I invited him on with my grandmother. He also got his other girlfriend pregnant multiple times while being with me at the same time. I think he may be a psychopath, so feel free to rip into him. I'm sure it won't hurt him. Kalila, you my main bitch. Thank you for your help. Wow. I assume this guy looks like Machine, machine Gun T- Kelly. Why? <laughs> I just in my head, Machine Gun Kelly. <laughs> that vibe? Yeah. yeah, that vibe. So he has tattoos on his neck. Pete Davidson style. <laughs> Just unbelievable. You want to go on a Pete Ra- Davidson rant or no? <laughs> uh, I don't have a rant. Uh, I yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just know that he could get away with anything, it seems like. He really does. Yeah. There is, Pete Davidson has a, like, I've seen him at the store. Yeah. And I've wanted to say hi to him, but I've opened my mouth and no- nothing's come out. Interesting. Why? I think because he's always in the center of some sort of social circle. A vortex, mm-hmm. yeah. Like a vortex of people. So it's either I have to pop in mm-hmm. yeah. and do my little thing, you know what I mean? Or I'll go, ah, nah. I bet you he'd do this podcast. I Probably. bet you he would. I don't think so. I think he would. I would love to. He's nice. We're nice, you know what I mean? Yeah. And Melanie's nice. I mean, guys like John Melanie, these guys show up, you know what I yeah. mean? It's great. But um, this, this lady has fucked this guy. Hold on, she hasn't fucked this guy. You're saying fuck this guy. She already fucked this guy. Yeah, she They were dating, uh-huh. right? Five years. F- for five years. Fuck this guy. Let him yeah, go. Him. Cut him loose. Yeah. yeah. He's a piece of shit. So loose. <coughs> I'm fine. My God. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah. Uh, I would say, you know, turn the other cheek, you know? Give him another five years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there we go. I, you know, Maybe. I think maybe this is what he needed to grow into being yeah, a great yeah, person. Yeah. yeah. And 
<laughs> and you know, worst case scenario, five years down the road, you know, you just you cut your losses and murder the guy. That's not a big deal. <laughs> That's a pretty good. This is good advice. Pretty good advice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or mm-hmm. what you do is you fuck his best friend. Yep. Yeah. His best friend's Tony, right? <laughs> and you get a tattoo. You shave all your pubes. Yeah. You get a tattoo of. I like that she has a, a full bush. bush in this she has a full bush. Scenario, yeah, seventies yeah. bush, right? She shaves it all, right? Seventies, <laughs> yeah. And she puts Tony's toy in <laughs> right? an arrow to the vagina. Sure. Yeah. So now this guy's eating her out, pulls her pants down. Right. And also do the face of Tony. Dude, also really be good careful because he's been institutionalized and locked up before, so we don't know what he yeah. could Money be. Money laundering, nothing right. harsh. Bite, okay. bite your labia. Yeah, he didn't kill anybody. This pussy. All right, well, like, you know, just... <laughs> this is Tony's fucking Tony, for, you fuck. You know, for a Tony's second, friend. I thought you were saying she that he cheated on her while he was incarcerated. And I'm like, he might not have had a choice in that. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah but, that, does, that doesn't count. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Poor, poor guy. Poor dude, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But dude, man, get your shit together. Yeah. What the hell? But just don't be a coward. That's really what it boils down to. If you're gonna be with someone, then just be with them. And if you're gonna fucking, if you're gonna fuck everyone, then just be the guy who fucks everyone. Also, don't I have heard a yes, girlfriend. I heard this new term. There's something called ethical non-monogamy. You could also just agree to fuck other people. You don't need to like do it behind her back and like hurt her. Yeah, you can find someone for that. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. I feel like if I was in prison, you're too plain to fuck. That's, you know, someone once told me. I that think you, the people, you would, everyone would do a hard pass on you. Someone said, well, <laughs> you know, if you were in jail, they'd put you in, in turquoise. And I go, what the fuck does that mean? And he goes, it means that people would think you're nuts. And so they would put you in a special section. Oh. Mm. And I was like, that's what I'm saying. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. Think you're one of those guys that could have shit on their face. What do you mean? Like, act you know, they, no, like, you know, in prison, you know how they act crazier? Oh, so my they, they'll, head they'll, took... they'll, they'll put poo on their face. Oh, and fecal smearers is what the term is. Yeah. yeah. What's the difference? So well, the who smears? The, the fecal smearers. Yeah, yeah that's, one of those yeah. When you said put shit on my face, how you meant like, you know, teardrop tattoos. <laughs> You're talking head, about actual shit on my face. My head took me somewhere else. I thought that it's because he was like the bottom and somehow he had He's to no blow bottom. the guy after he got fucked in the ass. My head took it completely. Oh, I mean, what a uh, visual. What a, <laughs> what a visual. <laughs> wow. What are you thinking about? Wow, no. We no. were all thinking about Rich's that. Rich's not a bottom. No. No, no, no. No, you're not a bottom. Yeah. You have like big top you. energy. No, you know what you are? You're the gimp. Thank you. I like think. in Pulp Fiction, when you take the <laughs> fucking you. mask off, right? it could be Rick Ingram. Mm-hmm. Mm. I mean, I, I, I'm on all sides of the gimp equation. <laughs> yeah. Same body type, you know what I mean? Yeah. Kind of like gimpy. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you have a gimpy vibe. I mean, all right. It's, anyway, it's nice to have someone say something like that finally <laughs> after all these years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, people have been so scared. So, Rick, I want to say to everyone listening, I want to say number one, it was a pleasure. Number two, we should we should have had you on way earlier. Number three, um, I feel good things for you in 2022. Thanks. Um, number we f- should make Rick 2022 shirts. I think so. Oh, you Rick 20. Those will sell like hotcakes. They and, would, and yeah. I think they will. And also, um. You have a lot of people that are legitimate people in the business, not just myself, a lot, that are rooting for you. So um, give Rick Ingram a huge round of applause. I love him so much. Wow, thank you.